my fellow citizens and residents of St. Kitts and Nevis. Congratulations are in order on our 37th anniversary of independence. Three decades and seven years ago, and a warm and almost cloudless Sunday night, the Union Jack, representing the power and authority of the United Kingdom, was lowered for the last time over our beautiful Twin Islands, and the national flag of St. Kitts and Nevis was unveiled majestically. The sun had set forever, and colonialism in our land, and the sovereign nation of St. Kitts and Nevis was born on the 19th of September, 1983. Though our new flag rose just 30 feet into the air, it symbolized the limitless rise in our patriotism, optimism, confidence and hope for our individual and collective futures as citizens of an independent St. Kitts and Nevis. No doubt there must have been some lingering concerns among the then leadership who was now charged with charting a course for this new nation as well as anxiety and excitement among the ordinary men and women. But as a strong and resilient people, we embraced independence, knowing that from then onward, our destiny will not be determined for us, but by us. We bade a nostalgic goodbye to Mother England and embraced the challenges and opportunities to fend for ourselves as a sovereign nation. We were confident that we could make a better life for ourselves, relying on our industry, ingenuity, resilience, innovativeness, and the favor of our God. Over the last 37 years, our nation has had a remarkable growth and success, and some tremendous national achievements. For those under 40 years of age who would have grown with those successes, it would be easy to see them, but maybe not as easy to truly appreciate the tremendous strides that we have made in a relatively short period of time. Our rate and level of development have caught and surpassed many other nations that would have embarked on their journeys decades before us. Today, St. Kitts and Nevis is among the best places to live and proudly stands as the best run, best managed small island state anywhere in the world. As a nation, we have the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the OECS. We were the first to outdo the debt to GDP target of 60% by 2030, set by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. We have the highest reserves and the best fiscal outcome in the region. Our per capita income remains the highest in the OECS and the highest among our peers in the hemisphere, excluding the USA, Canada, and Mexico. We rank high on the United Nations Quality of Life Index. Indeed, we are among the top performers in the sub-region and we tower above many larger and older independent states in the wider hemisphere. On the World Justice Rule of Law Index, we were consistently among the top performers, ranking top of the class at least twice in a row. Our spectacular build-out of ICT saw us receiving the award for major improvement in the information communications technology sector during the 14th World Telecommunications Conference in Botswana on December 12, 2016. We were the only country to receive two awards. There is further proof of our leadership in the world with the continuing fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. When, for example, the threat of COVID-19 was at its height, there was no playbook to follow. Every country around the world 
was literally making it up as it went. As such, we, the government of the people, endeavored to be diligent in all our decisions. It was that thoughtful and diligent deliberation that has brought us our successes thus far. Let it not be lost in us that, though we are the smallest sovereign nation in the Western Hemisphere, we were the last to have a confirmed case of COVID-19. We have the lowest number of cases of any sovereign state, and to God we give the glory, as we have no deaths so far. Our fiscal and economic response to the pandemic has been the largest per dollar in the region and the largest per capita in the world. It is the most comprehensive stimulus package. We offer the highest level of support to the most vulnerable, directly affected by COVID-19. Our nation is grateful for the internal expert advice provided to us in making those hard decisions, such as closing our borders and imposing lockdowns. We commend the work of the Chief Medical Officer, the Medical Chief of Staff, the National COVID-19 Task Force, the Health Emergency Operations Center on St. Kitts and on Nevis, our police, other armed and security forces, our emergency workers. Know always that your dedication and sacrifices resonate well with a grateful nation. As we prepare for the reopening of our borders, we call every citizen and resident to national service in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic and the renewed threats we are likely to face once we open our shores to visitors and returning nationals. Your government will continue to revise and implement the best policies and protocols and to deploy maximum resources where needed and where considered most effective. It is ultimately our individual actions that have and will have the greatest effect on COVID and containing any future cases of COVID-19. Though, for the most part, the restrictions have been eased, many have questioned the need for any at all. We are mindful that we prepare not for the present, but for the future. The wearing of masks and washing of hands, sanitization, and the physical distancing must become second nature to all our people. In so doing, we must prepare and protect ourselves and contain the eventuality of cases when our borders reopen. We are in this together. Indeed, none of us can exit this fight to defeat COVID-19 before any other. It is the clearest manifestation of collective responsibility. For indeed, if there is one person at risk, all of us remain at risk. So long as one country remains with COVID-19, all of us remain exposed and threatened. We are in it together. We must therefore see wisdom in working together. Trying times, of course, are not new to us in St. Kitts and Nevis. We have endured tests before, some of Mother Nature and some of human nature, some of world politics and economics, such as the dictates of some international organizations that can undermine our fiscal health, and some are of our own making. From starting out and having to build one nation with essentially two governments to watching the continual decline of sugar prices on the world market in the 1980s and 1990s, when sugar then was the mainstay of our economy, to Category 5 hurricanes, to FinCEN advisory and other advisories and blacklisting, 
We have had much shown at us as a people, but the determination, strength, resilience, and innovation of our people have always shown through, and those coupled with industry, ingenuity, and resourcefulness we have always, always overcome. And we have always emerged from the experience a stronger and more prosperous nation. Who, for example, would have imagined us going from the former administration, receiving an extraordinary bailout from the IMF in 2010, to our payoff of that IMF debt in two years under the enlightened leadership of my government? We have become a beacon to many, a shining example of democracy at work, peace and stability, opportunity and tolerance. Although we are the smallest independent country in the Western Hemisphere, thousands have flocked to our shores from larger countries seeking a better quality of life for themselves and their families. To our credit, they have found it. Some worked, earned, saved, and returned home. Others stayed, adding to the diversity and vibrancy of our increasingly successful Twin Island nation. This, in my view, is a testament to the truth that opportunities abound here for all who call St. Kitts and Nevis their home. I must implore all of us never to take what we have for granted and continue to build St. Kitts and Nevis as a true Garden of Eden, a prosperous, successful country exceeding the expectations of its citizens and residents. Over the last five years, we have continued to make great strides towards a stronger and safer future. We restored the fiscal health of our country, and in each year of my administration, we experienced economic growth. So good has the progress been that we were able in our last dispensation to finance the second cruise pair, an engine of future development entirely from domestic resources. This is significant because it not only gives us the resource, but ownership of the resource, and thus the profits stay within the borders of our country, thereby creating wealth. A much needed departure from the old way of waiting for foreign investment, which may create some jobs, but does not create wealth for the majority of our people at the level and rate we expect. It is exactly this kind of innovation and self-reliance that must become the hallmark of our people and leadership. A new entrepreneurial spirit has awakened, and every year over 600 new business licenses are being approved. Our strong economy has allowed us to better assist and equip those at the lower end of the economic spectrum. The poverty alleviation program, unprecedented anywhere in the region, continues to assist households with incomes of less than $3,000 monthly, even as we look towards the regularization of the over 4,000 non-established and step workers. It is a further demonstration of a continued tradition of shared responsibility. We have seen an initiative geared towards the safety and security of our nation take root, resulting in a dramatic reduction in homicides and violent crimes across the nation. The weeping and wailing of mothers and children whose sons and fathers were lost to gun violence have subsided, thanks to our peace initiative and its alternative lifestyle pathway. We will continue to reform it, to consolidate the gains in law and order, peace, 
public safety and security. Not only inside the islands does peace now abound, but between them, in all of our 37 years of independence, the relationship between the island of St. Kitts and the island of Nevis has never been better. With the advent of this Team Unity Administration under my leadership, unprecedented levels of cooperation have been attained, from revenue sharing and project funding on the island of Nevis, to coordination on issues of national security and the response to COVID-19. Even the ordinary citizens now interact more, as it is now routine to see, on any given Sunday, scores of kittishans on their way for a killer bee at Sunshine's and Pinney's Beach in Nevis, passing fellow Nevisians midstream, headed for a lime at Reggae Beach or Frigate Bay. Equally, our Nevisian families come regularly to St. Kitts to work, to shop, to attend the movies, to find a getaway from their routines and to participate in all aspects of socio-economic life. It would seem that we are now seeing the true embodiment of two islands, one federation. These successes cannot be taken for granted. Our societal leaders must do all we can to consolidate our gains as we celebrate our 37th anniversary of independence, let us recommit to achieve the national objectives with a unity of purpose. We have much to be proud of from where we have come. Our heritage, our struggles, our shared sacrifices, and our successes, but we have much yet to accomplish. As we look toward the next 37 years, we have much work to do if we are to increase the inheritance for the generation coming after us. The reality of the ongoing threat of the COVID-19 pandemic gives us new cause to revive energies towards agriculture and food security, not just for our survival, but for opportunities for further economic expansion and diversification. We must ensure that in the near term, our independence is defined by positive transformations. We must work hard to consecrate the future and to ensure that the generation after us will surpass us in every material particular. Our work must ensure the realization of a postmodern St. Kitts and Nevis, surpassing our peers and every indicator of a well-managed state. Accordingly, we should aim to rank number one in our hemisphere and the United Nations Quality of Life Index, number one in our hemisphere and the World Justice Report Rule of Law Index, number one in the hemisphere and the World Bank Ease of Doing Business, number one in the World Happiness Index, number one in the Productivity Index, number one in economic growth and fiscal balances. We will aim also to have at least 20% of the age cohort, 18 to 24 years, enrolled in tertiary level training, specifically in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, entertainment, including film and cinematography. We are living in changing times, and there are things that we cannot control. There is the uncertainty of the COVID-19 pandemic and this new normal in which we must now live and adjust. What we can and must resolve to always control is our prudent response to whatever may come. We must meet every challenge as a people in unity with the strength and resilience of our forebears, 
married with our resourcefulness and the ingenuity of our youth, we will face whatever comes with that shared responsibility which has always, always seen us through. Be assured, my fellow citizens and residents, that no sword, no spear, no virus can conquer. For God will show our defenders. May his blessings and our collective efforts indeed to posterity extend as we win through to absolute victory and continued prosperity. My fellow citizens and residents, I wish you all a happy independence. May God bless each of us, and may God continue to bless our Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, and indeed preserve us from all harm and danger. On the occasion of our 37th anniversary of independence, I again thank you for participating in the events and wish you well. I thank you for viewing.